seeing people. All right, we're just letting folks in from the waiting room. Thank you so much for attending today. I'm gonna let folks kind of pile in. It takes a couple minutes to get everybody in from the waiting room, <laughs> like a real room. <laughs> Awesome. All right, so I'll go ahead and get started since we're right on time for everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this uh, evening or afternoon, depending on where you are in the world today. Um, we are, the session is on managing uncertainty and we wanna say, say thank you to our sponsors, Mallinckrodt Pharmaceuticals for that, um, making this webinar and the well wellness series possible uh, every month. I'm Mindy Buchanan, I'm the Director of Patient uh, Programs at the Foundation for Sarcoidosis Research. And it's my pleasure to welcome Jenna Brooks, our expert today talking about managing uncertainty. Welcome, Jenna. Thank you so much. Nice to see you all. I'm gonna share my screen. Oh, and I did forget to tell people, sorry, <laughs> bad moderator job here. Uh, if you chat, um, you can ask questions, you can ask, send questions to Jenna, you can send them directly to Jenna, or you can send them to both of us as panelists, so myself and Jenna, if you want me to see it as well, um, but you're not, but the chat between participants has been disabled. Um, so sorry for that quick housekeeping, and we are recording, um, and this uh, session will be made available to you afterwards. So again, sorry, thank you, Jenna, and welcome. Thank you so much. And just to confirm, you can see my screen, Mendy? We can. Okay, excellent, wonderful. So my name is Jenna. Nice to meet you all who are joining us today. I am a clinical social worker. Um, my experience is in adult oncology and hematology at the University of Illinois Hospital. Um, I work with patients who have um, chronic health issues, um, comorbid health issues, um, you know, progressive terminal diagnoses, um, as well as short-term diagnoses. And, you know, all of the emotional, uh, all of the emotional things that, that come up with uh, medical diagnoses and treatment, like anxiety and depression, uh, relationship issues, financial issues. Um, you know, I really understand the value of the practical supports that patients need uh, throughout their medical journey, as well as the emotional and mental, mental supports as well. So it is great to be with you all. Um, our topic today is managing uncertainty um, with, with, with sarcoidosis and many other medical diagnoses. I know uncertainty is just part of the game. Um, there's so much that is unknown and there's so much that we worry about for the future and the future of our lives. Um, so that is what we will be working through together today. Um, just another housekeeping note as well. For now, I have my chat turned off. Um, I'll probably take maybe two or three breaks throughout the presentation to look at individual chats that you all have sent me, but um, feel free to send me any questions or any comments along the way. And again, I'll take a few breaks maybe to look at those throughout the presentation. So our agenda today is really divided up into four points. Um, the first is to provide you with tools and techniques to accept and manage uncertainty in your life, um, as well as letting your values be your guide. Um, when we're dealing with some of these uh, exceptionally stressful situations in our lives, how can we connect back to who we are at our core? How can we connect to our values? Um, and even furthermore, you know, what are we outside of our illness? How can we keep um, you know, our identities? How can we stay true to ourselves um, amidst a very challenging situation? And finally, when there is uncertainty, when, there, when we're lacking structure, when we don't know what's going on with our medical diagnoses and our prognoses, um, how can we create that structure and that clarity for ourselves to give ourselves more comfort, predictability, um, and, and again, clarity. Um, so, you are welcome to all send me some notes about some uncertainties in your life, but we actually asked you to send these to us before the webinar today. And I wrote some of them down. Um, 
which I'm ha which I'm gonna I, I will share with you all now. But I've listed a few here. Um, I think it was incredible learning more about what everyone um, is going through. Some uh, some examples of what some of the other participants have shared is the stability of the disease. For example, um, you know, will I ever be um, feeling more myself again? How long will I be in a flare up? Um, you know, what is what is my long term life going to look like with this disease? Um, as well as um, your functionality. When can I get back to work? How can I get back to work feeling the way that I am now? Um, I have someone mentioned I have an upcoming vacation that I really want to go to, and you know, how can I make it uh, feasible for myself to go? Can I, you know, do something that's, um, you know, requiring less energy from me, or um, you know, share with my family what I'll need throughout this vacation? I thought that was a really um, certain struggle that I that I that I can agree with. Um, a lot of people are still reeling from the limitations from the pandemic, whether that be um, if you're immunocompromised, if your doctors have told you that you need to limit interactions or still wear masks or not participate in public events. These are things that also, um, you know, they're happening with our pandemic and also with some of our medical issues as well. Um, a lot of uh, participants talked about prednisone and the issues with prednisone, how long to treat sarcoidosis with prednisone, how long do I have to take prednisone and the side effects of prednisone. These are, these are all questions that you all are asking each other and thinking about um, throughout your journey, um, as well as the long-term implications of pain. Um, will, will the pain that I'm in ever go away? How long will I be in pain? Is, is the pain also something that I need to worry about and manage now? Um, one of the participants wrote, will I ever be able to go biking and golfing again? And that's a really great um, goal to have. That's a really great thing to look forward to and something that, again, is uncertain, it seems. Um, a lot of concern about, you know, uh, disease spreading from one organ to different organs or spreading throughout the body um, and the implications of that with side effects and mobility and ability as well. Um, as well as access to medication, maybe some medications that are off label, maybe some medications that take time for approval, um, medications that some individuals may not be able to afford. Um, and with the healthcare system, you know, maybe only being in a rural location where there's no expert in sarcoidosis, um, as well as having to advocate for yourself with doctors that might not be specialists in this disease. Um, so lots of different struggles that people are going through. I want you all to know that um, I read through every single one of them and thank you so much for sharing them with us. Um, it's again, great to have community while you're going through an uncertain time in life. So just know that a lot of the participants are going through very, very similar struggles as you. So from a, um, psychological perspective, there is a biological response that we have to uncertainty. Our brain craves predictability, certainty, and, and uh, because that leads to safety and reward. And when we know things are in place, um, our brain gets satisfaction from that. So I've listed a picture of solitaire here because um, you know, these certain card games are symbols of absolute certainty and, um, and satisfaction. So other card games like Sudoku or crossword puzzles, even something like cleaning your house can be something that gives you a lot of reward. Um, you know, I am that, you know, I'm picturing myself cleaning my kitchen. Everything has its place. It feels very clean after I, uh, you know, everything is very clean after I put things into their place. So um, that feels very certain to me. But when things are uncertain, of course, our brain um, generates a stress response. This is a biological response that's similar to a perceived threat. Um, and this does inhibit our ability to focus on other issues in our lives. Um, we, we, again, our brain just craves that security and that clarity and that comfort. So um, when we don't have those things, I think it 
you know, I think I imagine the wheels turning and just a little bit more of that anxiety happening where we are not exactly sure how to cope with all of these things. Um, so again, we have the chat turned off, um, except for the panelists, me and Mindy, but if you would like to just think about in three words or less, um, how you have responded when faced with uncertainty thus far through emotions and actions. So in the left column with emotions, um, a lot of individuals say they feel fearful, you know, fearful about the future fearful about what's to come and you know what's required of them with this medical diagnosis, guilt about how this will affect relationships, how this will affect their ability to work and you know be in public with others, um, as well as sadness and mourning and grief. What have I lost because of um, this illness and um, you know the uncertainty that comes with this illness as well? Um, and despair and hopelessness, I, I think those two go together. Um, you know, what can I look forward to? What can I be hopeful to when I'm uncertain about what every single day brings? I think that's a really difficult thing for, for us to wrap our brains around. As well as anger, it's certainly reasonable to feel um, frustrated, angry with what we've lost and what we've become. And, um, as well as anxiety, you know, we, we all feel a little bit of a racing heart and, um, uh, you know, a, a little bit of shame as well with uncertainty. So it's okay to feel exhausted and overwhelmed. And um, these are all emotions that are quite regular with uncertainty as well. So for actions, I, I saw a lot of great um, ideas that you all had placed uh, in the chat online. The first being is to pray and meditate. Um, I think there's a, a really powerful um, connection to religion when we have nothing else to be certain about. Um, and that is our faith and our connection in God. And what religion provides for us is, um, you know, clarity and guidelines and um, even connection to people in the past who have been through uncertain and stressful times. Um, a lot of individuals say that all they can do is rest. Resting is um, our body telling us what it needs and taking time to take care of ourselves. Um, and that is a perfectly reasonable way to cope with uncertainty. As well as some of these coping skills like searching information and doom scrolling. I know that when things feel uncertain, we all just want answers. This could mean going online and searching for keywords or diagnoses or um, you know, certain treatments that we're going through, certain medications that we're, that we're looking for, and just seeing what others have been through, um, you know, seeing what other providers have said. Um, these, are, these are very normal coping skills, and I think, you know, it is helpful to maybe limit some of these coping skills to a degree, but um, it is all certainly normal, and I think even with a lot of social media, too, um, joining Facebook groups, joining Instagram groups that, you know, are, are relevant with sarcoidosis. I think that is a perfectly reasonable way to cope with uncertainty too. Um, I think a lot of times when um, we get a little overwhelmed with uncertainty, I think it's easiest to isolate and be alone because sometimes it can be hard to be with others. Um, it can be hard if you're in pain or if you don't have full ability to explain everything to others and, um, you know, deal with such a crippling um, disease when not everyone can understand what you're truly going through. Also, I think, you know, a lot of us sometimes just avoid some, some of the ideas of certainty. I think we can distract ourselves with, you know, everyday routine things cleaning, cooking, taking the kids to school, work. Um, and, and even if not, maybe, you know, just trying to get our minds off of some of the worrisome things that come up with uncertainty. 
And, you know, also the lack of motivation and initiative is very common when, you know, like we said earlier with some of the examples of uncertainty, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to go to work. I'm not, I'm not feeling up for meeting with the family. I'm not sure if I can even make this vacation. You know, those are very hard things to cope with and manage um, when you are trying to begin tasks or initiate tasks. Um, so I do think that it's all interconnected when we're just trying to get through our daily lives and we have this amount of stress with some of the uncertainty. Um, if participants are able, a lot, of, a lot of participants said that walking and exercising when possible is helpful. You know, getting outside for a breath of fresh air is, 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 is helpful as well. And as much as you can, as much as we know, to research some of the um, some of the treatments, some of the medicines, to talk to other people about what they've been through. That is all a very um, healthy way of coping and dealing with uncertainty. I want to emphasize that, um, again, I, I, I took some time to read through all of the lists of uncertainties that you all wrote. And we are all going through very similar things and it is really a gift to be with this community of all of you who are connected through this diagnosis and um, you know I think the focus of this presentation is there's really so much that we're all dealing with there's so much that you all have with medical treatment and you know the uncertainty of this diagnosis but for this hour and a half for this presentation we can focus on being together and accepting where we are now the um the saying goes people prefer the certainty of misery to the misery of uncertainty and i think with that saying there is um you know an emphasis on um you know also being with others and you know misery loves company and while you're going through such a difficult time i think it helps to be with others i think it helps to develop relationship through the uncertainty as well so um, where we are today is just being together and um, accepting that what we're going through is a shared experience and however we can help each other is what we're here for. So the first um, technique that we're going to talk about today is letting your values be your guide. Um, in times of uncertainty, I think it's really important to connect with ourselves, connect with who we are at our core. What are our principles? What is our standards of behavior? What is important to us? You know, if I am uncertain about what this next week brings, what do I need to accomplish today? What do I want to think about today? Where do I want to, see, where do I want to be at the end of the day? Do I want to be, um, you know, do I have certain things that I need to do? Do I want to be um, you know, prepared for tomorrow? Do I only worry about today? Um, these are all things that um, values give us to provide us direction, give us meaning and help ground us. Um, I saw a lot of people mention you know, family and relationships in the questions before the chat as well, um, that these are all, you know, the people in our lives are the ones that we wanna connect with and be with throughout the uncertain times. Um, so again, our, our chat is just me and Mindy, but feel free to share if you would like some of your top values that um, keep you grounded in times of uncertainty and help you cope. So for example, family and music, I think these two kind of go hand in hand, but you know, do I take time every day for 30 minutes or 45 minutes to listen to my favorite album um, or you know, take a walk and listen to music on my headphones? Um, you know, if nothing else, do I give all of my energy? Do I give all of my time to work? Um, do I, you know, dedicate my free time to um, getting outside or exercising or making sure that I get a few errands done around the house or these things that I really want to focus on while I have my free time? Um, marriage and parenting as well. Um, I think it's really um, incredible that all of us have so many responsibilities still that we're dealing with um, amidst uncertainty and 
Um, how can we incorporate fun into these things that we have to do every day of our lives as well? Um, calmness is um, something that a lot of you talked about as well. How can I take some time for myself to breathe, to be alone, to reconnect with myself, to have that time to just be quiet? Maybe that's something that we can do every day with purpose and with meaning also. Um, independence too, you know, can I, how can I um, make sure that I'm getting the chores done that I can or that I have the ability to, um, you know, how can I make it so that um, I'm taking care of the things that I need to take care of without needing to rely on others. Um, and on the other hand, if we need to rely on others, that is perfectly, that is a perfectly good value as well. How can I be connected with others still throughout this diagnosis? And if I do need to rely on others, how can we still have connection throughout this process? Um, as well as nature and, and friends, you know, is that, does that look like, um, you know, sitting outside with friends or going for a walk with friends outside as frequently as possible or, um, you know, just opening the window to take it to, to get to get some fresh air. These are all excellent values to be thinking about still every day um, amidst uncertainty. So admittedly, I've done this before, but sometimes our values do not line up with our actions. They're difficult to live up to or other things get in the way. I think that we all get busy. We all have medical appointments. We are worried. We might have lost some of our abilities and you know, this disease can leave us in pain. We may not be able to do the things that we normally may be able to do. Um, but I think it is really important still every once in a while to connect with what are truly your values and things that are important to you. Because again, with this image, you know, our values can really be our direction. Our values can be our direction in the course of our medical treatment, um, in the course of what, you know, what life we have left and also um, in our relationships with our family also. So if we all just want to take a few moments to think about these questions, <clears throat> Um, how to align our values and our actions together. What values do you hope to focus on in the future? You know, in these next few days, maybe how do you incorporate some of your values into your everyday life and into some of your everyday practices? What life changes would you want to make to ensure you are living up to your values? Um, you know, is this setting some time aside every day to be alone to take deep breaths to meditate or to call a friend um, to have that connection or to get outside all of these things are connected with your values and also how can focusing on your values help you endure uncertainty as well really great question i think um i think i you know i've been thinking about this question up until this presentation as well and um you know I think it's a good practice to keep in mind every day. And um, it's important to maybe also speak with others about this also and, and see how you're, you can you know, rely on others to help you pursue your values. When speaking about values connected to um, medicine, I think there is a way to also align values with a, with a disease as well. Um, you can bring values into your quality of care and to your social strategy. I think it's really important to, um, you know, share with your doctor or your medical team. It's important to me to be able to be to go on vacation next week. It's really important to me that I'm able to go to work. It's important to me that, you know, I have physical ability to, you know, get outside once or twice every day. These are things that we can bring and we can share with our medical team because um, it does help with the social strategy of um, medical treatment. Um, I think that you know when we're dealing with doctors and the medical team, sometimes the focus can just be curing or healing or managing an illness. Um, but I think it's important also 
how can we take account your, you know, the social part of the illness? How can we make sure that you're living with your social values every day with an illness? This is all data to build conversations around, again, to bring to your medical team, um, to emphasize to them. And this also may help to reduce uncertainties in medical care if your team is aware of what is important to you. Um, your values can guide you through, through these difficult choices if you have you know, options or choices or different routes that you can take within your medical treatment. These are all things to keep in mind to help guide you and also to just ground you in some things that are certain to you, your values. These are some examples of how we can use our values to engage in conversation with medical professionals. For example, it's important for me to know a time span for recovery as I would like to tell my daughter how soon after my procedure she can schedule her baby shower. And if not a time span for recovery, maybe, you know, um, what can I do in advance of this uh, baby shower or in advance of this procedure to make sure that um, the outcomes are the best that they can be. Also, what possibilities will this test rule out? I'm hoping this answer may bring me more sense of calm. I think when we are all searching for answers, I think when we're all Googling or on Facebook or just trying to find any sense of clarity, we get lots of answers. We get lots of explanations. Um, and for just the team to rule out some of these, some of these options would be uh, a really great, a really great strategy. And finally, can you explain the risks and benefits of this proposed test more in detail? I'd like to know as I value transparency, even if this answer may be difficult for me to hear. Um, lots of good ideas for uh, bringing values in with medical care um, for you all got, for you all to think about. Um, and finally, with, um, you know, in regards to, to medical care, I think the, the beauty of uncertainty is um, that we can always stay connected to who we are and at, and at our core, nothing changes who we are and we are not just our illness, we are not just our condition, we are still a person. As much as sometimes it may feel like we are our disease and that is all we think about every day, um, we are more than just our symptoms. I'm going to take a uh, two or three minute break here to look at the chat so far because I see um, some comments here. So if anyone needs a quick bathroom break or a quick drink, I'm just gonna look at the chat. Wonderful, so some of the other actions that one of the participants wrote is meditate, pray, exercise, talk to people who have gone through it. So again, that, that idea of community is really, really helpful. Spending time with grandchildren, playing computer games, spirituality, marriage, friends and family, wonderful, wonderful coping skills. Excellent uh, actions here also. Writing down goals for the day, that's a great strategy at the beginning of every day. And check at the end of each day how consistent or faithful I am in achieving these values. Wonderful. Bringing values into conversation is a great idea as it allows others to assist and help you meet your goals. Absolutely, absolutely. So the parts perspective is an excellent way to help us sort of compartmentalize what we're going through with uncertainty. I think sometimes with uncertainty, we can globalize what we're going through, the emotions we're feeling, you know, this is my entire day that I have to worry about this uncertainty or, um, you know, this is my entire life now. But how can we sort of recognize and honor the multiplicity of who we are? We all have different parts. Um, we all have different pieces of ourselves that make us who we are. Um, but how can we make it so that the parts that are not our illness, the parts that are not uncertain, we hold close and we value those and we work with those every day. Um, so for example, this chart that I've made um, is sort of imagine ourselves thinking about like what our brain has capacity for in one day. If we think about our illness for 40% of the day, if we feel our illness, illness and we're thinking about our illness 40% of the day, that leaves 60% of us 
that has the capacity to maybe do other things such as parenting, work, walking, chores, hobbies. Um, you know, how can we devote our energy to these, to, to this 60% so that we remain active and empowered and with agency in our lives? Um, you know, if I spend, if I spend 40% of my day thinking about my illness, how can I, okay, turn off that part of my day, turn off that, that those thoughts for that time. And the rest of the day, I can spend my energy um, on the other parts of myself. I know it is a, an incredibly difficult task because sometimes the uncertainty is all consuming. It, it truly is. Um, but how can we engage our energy in different parts of ourselves um, so that that can give us some clarity and certainty? Um, so the positive parts, again, these are things that we can, that can help us to disengage from thoughts and sensations and you know, we're never going to make the unpleasant and the uncomfortable parts disappear, um, but we can maybe help to shift our attention to uh, certain parts of ourselves, certain tasks, thoughts, or moments. And again, this all takes practice. It is, it is so hard to do. I acknowledge it is so difficult to, um, you know, compartmentalize some of the energy outside of our uncertainty and our illness. Um, so I do have now a short mindfulness activity focused on uncertainty. Um, please feel free to keep your eyes open, look at the screen, close your eyes, whatever you feel comfortable doing. Um, I will lead us again through a guided spoken meditation. In this mindfulness exercise, I'll guide you to focus on the certainty of this present moment through deep breathing exercises and sensory exercises. We can all take this time to focus on the here and now and not the uncertainty of the future. So find a comfortable position, making sure your back is supported. If possible, plant your feet firmly on the ground or your bottoms firmly on the ground. As you settle into this moment, notice how you are feeling. Without trying to change anything, observe your body, your mind, and your breathing. Take a deep breath in, and now exhale. Breathe in, and breathe out. Focus on your breathing. For this moment, um, try not to let any thoughts or worries pass through you. Um, thoughts, of course, will arise. They're natural, they're thoughts. When they arise, don't judge them, don't analyze them, don't be fooled by them. Simply let them pass, they are just thoughts. For now, focus on your breath. Breathe in and breathe out. Uncertainty is part of our life's situation. For this moment, we do not need to anesthetize this discomfort or make it go away. Instead, we can work to slowly observe and acknowledge this discomfort as part of our life. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. The difficulty of uncertainty is that it cannot be evaded or denied. Sometimes uncertainty can loom so large that it seems to be all there ever was or all there ever will be. For this moment, all we can do is focus on our breathing. Breathe in and breathe out. We start from where we are right now, and we respect and acknowledge what we are going through as the way things are here and now. And we remember that things are constantly, constantly changing, moving on and impermanent. Breathe in and breathe out. At a time like now, let go of the need to control or change the course of your future. Allow yourself to be fully in this moment, relaxing, breathing, and doing nothing. 
Breathe in, breathe out. Accept the way that you are feeling right now, physically or emotionally, whether that is negative or positive. Allow your body and mind to just be. Breathe in and breathe out. Slowly and smoothly, don't rush ahead. Don't make yourself feel a certain way. Don't worry too far about the future ahead. Don't force yourself to do more than you are doing right now. Allow the movement of your breath to ground you in this present moment. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathing is a time to reconnect with yourself and recharge. It gives you a moment to give yourself respite and a short break. You are taking care of yourself through deep breathing. Breathe in and breathe out. Take note of how your body feels now. Take note of the pace of your breath. Breathe in, breathe out. Slowly reawaken your body now. Take a deep breath in and out. Feel your body becoming more alert and awake. If possible, move your arms, your legs, your eyes, your face, and stretch or tighten your muscles in whatever way you are able to, to reawaken. Sit for another moment now with your eyes open, observing the space around you. Remember the state of relaxation and continue to access this um, as you continue with your deep breathing. Breathe in. Breathe out. So I hope that was um, a brief uh, but helpful mindfulness exercise that you can remember and that you can practice. That was just, it looks like that was just about five minutes. So I hope that was a helpful exercise for you all and just grounding yourself in the present moment and not worrying too far in the future about what is uncertain. So to continue with our presentation, I really loved this quote um, that says, do whatever you do intensely. And I think as much as we can worry about the uncertainty and as much as we can devote our energy and our time to um, thinking about our illness and what's to come, I would, all, I would challenge you all to see if you can also devote that energy to um, loving intensely, to breathing intensely to looking out the window and enjoying the nature intensely and really thinking about what we are doing in this moment, in this hour, in this minute, um, and, and not always letting our minds go to worrying about what's uncertain. Um, so to move on to the next uh, tool that we talked about in this presentation is how can we create certainty, clarity, and comfort for ourselves. These are not things that maybe come naturally for us. Um, maybe some of the certainty of our lives, of our routines, of our ability have been taken away from us. Um, but how can we create some of these things for ourselves to better cope with what is uncertain? I want to emphasize the importance of a daily routine. I know that it may seem a little silly and these are um, you know, quite, um, repetitive coping skills that we might, may all have heard, but it is really truly something powerful when we think about what a routine can give us. Um, in psychology, there's something called behavioral activations. Behavioral activations are exercises um, and processes that we can think about to help us engage in our everyday routine. When we do not keep a daily routine, there are some negative behaviors and negative consequences that can happen. So you'll see this um, loop here that, that I've shared. Um, for example, if we don't keep a similar daily routine, somewhat of a normal routine, for example, sleeping in until noon, um, you know, maybe you had a bad night's sleep and you, you, know, you weren't able to wake up as early as you would like, so you slept in, but then you have some negative emotions and you feel guilty and you wanted to get you know, 
an errand in in the morning or you wanted to get a phone call in the morning in, but you had to put that off until the afternoon. So maybe that can bring up some stress or some negative feelings, um, which in time, if we let these things sort of compound and we keep sleeping in, the negative emotions and the stress may add up as well. Um, so again, those consequences are maybe we missed breakfast, maybe we didn't have time to exercise, maybe we missed, you know, the sunrise, uh, maybe we missed um, going for a walk in the morning. And those are things that um, do keep us active and our minds engaged and our minds energized. Um, over time, the brain's response is an increased level of stress due to these unaddressed responsibilities or things that we want to do. Um, and the negative emotions add up, such as guilt, um, reduced energy, shame, lack of motivation and initiation. Um, and, you know, when you go to wake up the next day, you might not have that energy or that alertness to get yourself out of bed, even if you've had a bad night's sleep, even if you're not feeling well. So as far as holding yourself accountable, again, this is a really hard task to do, but um, try to make promises to yourselves. Try to say out loud or write down, I, tr I promise to try my best. Um, I promise to finish what I started. I promise to take care of myself. I promise to wake up um, maybe by 9.30 every day, I promise to get out of bed by 10 a.m. That could be the one promise that you may want to tell yourself to keep to yourself, maybe write it down to yourself the night before so that first thing in the morning you are reminded of that promise that you wanted to hold for yourself. Um, another idea is to write down the exact times of your daily routine. For example, get out of bed by 10 a.m., um, Go for a walk by 12 p.m. noon. Get outside by 3 p.m. in the afternoon. And, you know, it is, of course, reasonable to miss some of these promises, to miss some of these uh, deadlines, to, to fall out of routine. And it's absolutely normal. But, um, you know, are we checking in with ourselves? Are we still making progress? You know, if I slept in until 12 p.m. noon on Monday and I wanted to wake up at 10 a.m. on Tuesday, well, you know, if I couldn't get out of bed until 11 a.m., that's still progress from the day before. Um, you know, does that time that I need to wake up, does that need to be adjusted from 10 a.m. to 10.30 or 11? These are all things that can be um, modified or changed, but as long as you are really keeping yourself to your goals and to your promises, that can really help with some of the energy and the certainty that we have in our lives. Um, to combat procrastination, obstacles and temptations, I would say the best idea for this is to strategize. Um, is this an accountability partner? Is this, you know, a, a friend calling you in the middle of the day to make sure that you're out of bed? Is this a friend meeting you at, at your um, apartment or your house to make sure that you're getting outside? Um, is this, you know, maybe a meal plan or helping someone, you know, cook with you to make sure that you're getting adequate nutrition every day? Um, you know, is this someone sitting down with you to make appointments, pay bills, help you just complete some of the daily tasks that you need help completing if that's difficult? Um, and absolutely, we will fall. Our routines are so difficult to keep track. Every day is a new opportunity and every day is a new start for you to think about um, what will help create clarity and certainty today. What can I do to help myself with these steps today? An example of routine that I've listed here is something quite simple. So um, for example, just three different um, time slots within every single day, a morning, an afternoon, and an evening. Um, the morning could be wake up by 8 a.m. and eat a full breakfast. If that is all that we can keep for our routine, that is certainly a reasonable expectation and a reasonable goal for the morning. By the afternoon, maybe by 3 p.m., is it something like go for a 15 minute walk? And in the evening, you know, we relax, we play music, we call a friend. Um, you know, you'll see this is, these are just a few small goals to help keep us in a routine every day that we can write down. And when you look back at a full week, when you look back at what you've been able to do every day, 
that gives you that sense of accomplishment, that gives you that clarity. Oh yes, on Monday I did, I spoke, I spoke to John or on Tuesday I spoke with my friend and I learned a new piece of music. So these are things that can still give us the energy and the, um, and the will to get through every day with goals. This, the, the most important part of this message is to keep quite simple and realistic goals. Um, you know, getting out of bed at a certain time, eating at a certain time, talking with friends, these are all things that can bring brightness and energy into our lives and um, something to look forward to, um, a distraction from some of the uncertainty that we're having. Um, it can really all be helpful. Um, I would ask you if you would like to share with me in the chat, what are some of the biggest barriers for you to accomplish your daily tasks? Um, you know, I would say mine is obviously the first one is sleeping. I think that I'm prone to sleeping in at the beginning of the day. And sometimes that doesn't always make for the best start of the day, but um, it is truly um, one of the first things that sort of um, brings on the tone for the rest of the day. So I will open the chat if you would like to share again. Um, maybe I'll take two or three minutes to look at the chat right now to see what you all have been saying. Um, but, you know, any barriers to accomplishing daily tasks, feel free to share those as well. One of the participants mentioned that um, going back to our discussion about parts, it's really hard to turn off parts when you are feeling pain, um, but meditating, Bible scriptures um, can help master control of your body, negative thoughts and situations. Absolutely. Again, the, the idea of engaging in certain parts is really hard when one part is completely overwhelming and completely debilitating. But, you know, just that little bit of extra energy to reading or meditating can help balance out some of the negative emotions that come with pain and uncertainty. Fatigue is also a huge issue in sarcoidosis as well. And, um, you know, I would say um, in regards to what we're talking about with daily routines and engaging in parts, um, you know, if fatigue is overwhelming, if that is something that feels all consuming, I would devote your energy to, um, you know, thinking about that part of you, resting that part of you breathing through that part of you and working to help accept that that is, you know, maybe what your day is going to be is working through that pain, thinking about that pain. Um, I would also say there's excellent, excellent resources online for meditation exercises with pain as well um, that can help you sort of sit with your pain differently, think about your pain differently. Um, these are all things that, that are available. Um, Problems sleeping lead to problems waking up. Absolutely, a good night's sleep sometimes is the biggest challenge, and that can be the biggest barrier of the day. Um, but you know, maybe that maybe a flexible routine in the morning. Maybe get out of bed between the hours of you know eight and ten. Maybe that maybe that could be a, a flexible way to handle some of the changes that go with sleep as well. Um, some of the other barriers to routine are. Um, losing a work routine because of symptoms flaring up and um, maybe watching some, watching less news, that's a really great idea as well. Yeah, you know, when work is not possible, when um, symptoms from the disease um, prevent us from, from doing some of the helpful things of our routine like work, you know, it's really a challenge to make ourselves responsible for our, our own routine and make ourselves, you know, separate the day between morning, evening, and night, and, you know, give ourselves some boundaries throughout the day. But, um, you know, it is a practice and it, it is something that if you don't have the energy to sit down every day, write it down, think about it, you know, maybe just before bed, just a few minutes while you're in the shower, while you're, you know, cleaning up for the day, Think about what you want for tomorrow. Think about how your day was today, maybe what you would change for tomorrow. And that can also help ground you um, in keeping a routine, even if it's not as formal as we discussed, writing things down and everything. 
oops, I'm sorry. Let me go back to my slide here. Can everyone see my screen? Oh. No, you can't. <laughs> okay, I'm so sorry. I think I accidentally pressed share. stop sharing. Can you see my screen now? We can. Okay, great. Let me reopen the chat. Okay, excellent. Okay, so I'm going to close the chat for now, but feel free to keep sharing if you have more ideas. I have um, included this slide because I am aware that um, pain, symptom flare-ups, uncertainty about your disease is so all-consuming, so worrisome, so overwhelming. Um, so in terms of how we can manage this with the parts perspective, I would suggest maybe scheduling worrying time. Set aside a time of day, a place, and a length to do active worrying. Engage in serious worry and match this uh, match these thoughts with one or two other sensory outputs, like thinking and writing or thinking and speaking, because these double sensory outputs help us to really process through these thoughts. It's even better if you can process with someone else that you trust and that you love and who can listen to you. Um, but what this allows us to do is um, some of the thoughts that we have swirling around in our minds, some of the ideas that are all consuming, some of the some of the things that we just can't stop thinking about can at least be um, exerted or exhibited in another manner. Um, so with this activity, what we can do is, um, you know, think actively think at one specific time about what we're worried about, what's uncertain, um, and what gives us all of that stress that's, that's happening. Um, so when these thoughts arise during the day, you can sit down, you can write them down on a piece of paper, um, or uh, if it's not your scheduled worry time, you can say, you know what, I'm gonna sort of keep that thought in my head, but tuck it away for now um, and think about it later when I have my worry time. Okay, I'm gonna think about that appointment that I have coming up, but you know what, right now I'm actually outside. I don't wanna think about that right now. Let me keep that in mind for my worry time later at 6 p.m. tonight, for example. Um, all of the skills that you have for mindfulness and meditation and your coping skills can help you bring some of your attention back to the present so that this worrying is not constant. I, I agree that sometimes it does take up a majority of the day, but if we can really dedicate some time to it, maybe that will release us from some of the energy throughout the other parts of the day. Um, if you would like, you can also incorporate worry time into a daily schedule. Um, so for example, I worry the most maybe at the end of the day before bed. What does, you know, maybe writing down some thoughts around dinner after dinner, and then maybe doing a meditation or a mindfulness exercise to go before I go to bed. Because, um, you know, that ability to like cleanse, get it out, process, um, and then move forward can be really helpful. Um, I will open the chat for one final time for the, I, um, these comfort activities. So um, we asked you before the, um, before the session to also share how you manage your uncertainties. Amazing, amazing ideas, prayer, meditation, exercise, spend time with family, um, lots of wonderful thoughts. Feel free to share those with us in the chat if you would like as well right now. Um, I would say some simple things um, that are quite distracting and also quite healthy are to color. I think it's a really cathartic therapeutic experience to have those clean lines. Um, again, to have that certainty of what you're coloring, to already know what you're coloring, um, to look out the window to get some fresh air, cuddle a pet, call a person who makes you laugh, um, take a relaxing bath or shower. These are all things that um, can help us dedicate some time for ourselves and really practice some self-care. So once again, feel free to share with me 
um, I will open the chat as well right now. Excellent idea. Instead of scheduling worrying time, maybe scheduling praying time. That can be a wonderful, wonderful alternative to worrying. I think sometimes um, with worrying time, I'm also thinking about like, we get these thoughts of doom and worst case scenarios and um, you know some really extreme thoughts that we can get. And I think it's appropriate and it's healthy to let those come out because sometimes they may be a little extreme. We realize that they may be um, unhelpful or irrational, but um, again, if, if worry time is better spent praying, I think that's an excellent, excellent idea. One of the participants shared, sometimes it's difficult to get out of bed um, because of pain. Um, drastic weather changes really make you suffer. Um, and sometimes worrying does not help and it can make things worse. Absolutely, I honor that, I recognize that. Um, and I think distraction is very, is very helpful, very normal, very reasonable. Um, there is value in not thinking about this all of the time. And so, um, like we said with the parts idea, if you're worrying and you don't wanna be worrying, maybe you can separate that, compartmentalize that into a different part of your day and to a different part of your head um, to focus on other things for now. Let's see, cuddle a pet, take a relaxing bath, starting a journal, excellent, excellent idea. Crafts distract this participant from the guilt of not being as productive. There is a final product, absolutely. A sense of accomplishment, a sense of completing something, um, you know, finishing an art project, having something of value, having something to show that you completed in front of you is a great way to cope. Coloring, playing games on your phone, a Bible app on your phone, excellent ideas. Um, if you're an introvert, journaling may help deal with the stress um, to use it as a tool towards relaxation and healing. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I also honor that sometimes it is hard to share with other people. You know, sometimes it may feel like a burden. Sometimes others may not understand what we're going through. So journaling can really be a dedicated time for you to connect with yourself and your emotions, whether or not you share that with other people as well. Embroidery. Oh, I'm sorry, I keep doing that. Can you, sell, can you see my screen now? We can, yeah. Oh, great, great. Um, one participant said, I'm an early riser. I get up immediately after husband leaves for work, hard to get back to bed. Um, a little anxiety may set in at times. How can I overcome this? That's a great question. Um, I would say that waking up and going back to bed is one of the most difficult parts of everyone's life, Wh whether you're facing uncertain times with a medical diagnosis and even without a medical diagnosis. Um, my first tip is do not distract yourself with phone, screen time, you know, opening the blinds with light as much as you can, keep it a bedtime environment. Um, I would say deep, deep breathing with longer exhalations, focusing on your breath, even counting your breathing um, can really be helpful with relaxation. Um, and finally, unfortunately, if it's taking you too long, I would say maybe get out of bed, take a break. If it's a reasonable time, you can go back to bed and try again. Um, but as much as we can force our brains to think about the bed and bedroom as sleeping, um, as opposed to having trouble sleeping, that, that those are my tips for helpful sleep. Excellent. Okay. So to wrap up, um, in one of our final slides here, um, I wanted to put these stairs as a metaphor to focus on the next step, small or large, and not the entire 
staircase, not all of the levels that we need to climb up every day what, over months and over years of our lives. Um, I think this can be um, a really overwhelming diagnosis. I think pain can be a really difficult thing to deal with. Um, uncertainty is not something that you can, um, that our brains have an easy time of grasping. Uncertainty is so confusing and so difficult for us to, to cope with. Um, but if we can focus on what is the next step for every minute, every hour of every day, um, that can help keep us energized, focused, um, and comfortable with, with what's to come. This could look like, you know, just thinking about the next appointment, just thinking about what chores I need to accomplish for the day, only thinking about, you know, what am I going to eat for lunch instead of what am I going to eat for the rest of the week? So um, keeping things in small, small ideas, keeping thoughts reasonable, um, not globalizing and not worrying about the big, big, big picture, but just what we're thinking about today, what we're feeling now, the certainty of now um, is, is a nice mindset to have. Um, really difficult to do. I, I completely understand that that's really difficult, but um, it's, a, it's a good way to think about um, approaching smaller things, approaching what we can handle every day instead of the uncertainty of what we cannot handle. So these are my references. I'm going to go ahead and open up the chat. Um, I would love for this, these last few minutes that we have together to open up a discussion. Um, if anyone would like me to share any thoughts that you have, feel free to send them to me. If anyone has questions, I would love to answer them. Um, but again, to, to bring it back to what I mentioned in the beginning, this is about community. This is about helping each other. We are all facing uncertainty in these times. So as much as we can share and as much as we can talk, I would be happy to facilitate that. A morning 30 minute yoga routine covers many of the strategies that we talked about today. Absolutely. If exercise is possible, even for five minutes, 10 minutes, chair yoga, sitting exercises, you know, breathing exercises, these are all things that are really helpful with coping. And if you have the ability to exercise, get out for walks, we know that this is really healthy, helps with endorphins, helps with blood flow. Um, and can really help manage things physically and emotionally. Yeah, and, and one of the participants said that it's great to know that others just have concern about what sarcoidosis patients are dealing with. Um, you know, the issue that I've, that I've become familiar with is that there is so much unknown. There is so much uncertain. Um, there's so much that cannot be planned, cannot be predicted. Um, and just the certainty of knowing that there is community and knowing that there are other people to help and other people who care about what you're going through is comforting. Um, I remember in one of the comments from um, when you all shared your concerns, you know, what, you're what types of uncertainties you're dealing with before the Zoom. Um, and some participants shared that, uh, they are their own advocate within the medical system. There are not a lot of people who know much about, about sarcoidosis. They live in rural areas. There may not be specialists in their areas yet, um, but they've connected with so many people like organizations like this, others with sarcoidosis who can really help them, give them information, help them be a guide throughout this process and give them some of that certainty of I've been through this before. I've tried this medication. I've tried this doctor. I've tried this pill. There are some things that can be certain from sharing with others and from uh, communicating with others as well. Excellent. So let me scroll through here. Wonderful. Journaling. Prayer. Yes, and poetry as well. I think that um, going back to that comment, I love the idea of um, different art forms, embroidery, knitting, 
poetry, um, beading. Um, these are all excellent coping skills. And what I like about them is that, um, like we said, they're very safe and clean. You know exactly where you want to put the needle and the thread. You know exactly how to build something that becomes a larger scarf or a larger uh, cloth. And um, that really helps the brain feel a sense of accomplishment and a sense of security. With other more free art forms like poetry, like painting, um, again, I just think this is such an excellent outcome and an excellent outlet and something that really helps bring clarity for uncertain times. Puzzles, excellent idea as well. Yes, puzzles take time. Um, you're working to fit all of these pieces together. Um, and those are wonderful, wonderful, fun things to do. Lots of people have puzzles now too because of the pandemic. So if you have any people in your community that have done their puzzles so many times, you can share and trade puzzles as well. Another participant shared a lot of us lost family and friends because we didn't always look sick. I'm happy that we have somewhere to go. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I think the um, a big difficulty with some of these issues is that um, it's so helpful to be able to speak with people who are going through um, a shared illness, a shared diagnosis. Um, when friends and family may just may not understand it. And while they are supportive and loving and there for you, um, it is so helpful to get that clarity from others who are going through the exact same thing and who can understand what you're going through. So excellent, excellent comment. Just scrolling through to see if I've missed any comments, but you all have been sending me wonderful ideas and um, excellent additions to my presentation. Are you still getting comments there, Jenna, or, or you know no? What? No, they've quieted down, but, but thank you all so much for, for sharing that all with me. It was so wonderful. And um, I hope you all have gained some insight for today's presentation. Yes, thank you so much, Jenna. Thank you to everybody who came here today. You know, it's, it's a true act of self-care to come and join these webinars and to take these um, bits of information away. Um, so just a reminder, I will be sending out a video of this, uh, a recording of this. It does it usually takes me a little bit because I have to edit it and then, and then upload it, <laughs> the whole process. Um, and with that, I will send a PDF of these slides uh, as well as all of the links that I mentioned in the chat today. Because as uh, you guys might have noticed, a lot of the things that Jenna was talking about is ways for helping with this uncertainty. And, you know, the meditation session that she did um, briefly in the middle of this, in this presentation, uh, we offer monthly mindfulness and meditation sessions to everybody and they're free to come to. Uh, they are also recorded. So if you can't get to them, just go ahead and sign up because you will get the video. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to send out all the links that I put in the chat. And again, thank you to Jenna for being such a great um, expert for us today and for such an excellent session. And again, thank you to everybody who attended today. Thank you, Mindy. All right. You guys have a great day. Thank you so much.